You mean bread and butterflies? Oh, yes, of course. Hmm? Okay. It's my third try at recording this. Hopefully it'll work. Um, so welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be going over final edits that I apply to my designs. Just final... Basically things that will help make your image pop off and just look better in general and you'll be able to fine-tune it to what you like So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to have your edit in a single layer and then you're gonna want to duplicate it head over to filter Blur Gaussian Gaussian blur You're gonna blur it to the point where you want to blur as much as you can while still being able to see What the image is mainly composed of so you still have an idea. So this seems about good 16 but it'll be different for you. We'll see. You'll see. And then I'm going to go to Layer Styles. I'm going to go to Overlay. And as you can tell right away, all the colors are more defined. Everything just feels more defined. The darkers are much darker, obviously. But I'm going to keep it at 100 for now, the opacity. I'm going to duplicate the original layer again, Control J. I'm going to drag it over the blurred layer. I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and high pass. And then what this will do is it'll grab the sharp part of your images and it'll create this layer. And so you want to push it to the point where you don't see too many shadows. Too many halos is the term, I guess. So around 4.7 worked fine for me. It's mostly just grabbing the text, which is the really the only non blurred part of my image. And then I'm going to go to layer styles again, overlay. And then if we zoom in, you'll be able to tell that it's much more defined actually. You're gonna be you're gonna find yourself using this a lot, I have. So I'm gonna keep it on. Then I'm gonna lower this to a point that I like. 88% is fine. So already we really changed the whole image. Um, but now we're gonna go a step further. We're gonna select the top layer, bottom layer while holding shift, so it'll select everything. And then Control E will merge everything. Ideally, you'd group it, create a new group, and then click Control E for that. So you can have your old layers, but we're not too worried about that right now. Then, next, what we're going to go into, a lot of people don't know about this, but if you do use Lightroom, you'll essentially be able to find Lightroom inside of Photoshop. So if you go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, then let it load up you'll notice that you have all of the edits that you can make on Lightroom right in Photoshop. So this, usually you just go through like you would sort of edit a photograph or a picture. Obviously, this isn't a photograph or a picture, but you can do the same HSL adjustments, which is really the most important part of this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time lapse through all the initial edits. And then we'll go, once I'm at HSL, I'll show you guys how that works, because it's pretty interesting. Alright, so I am in the HSL adjustments, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. What it allows you to do is it allows you to go through each color, so there's red, orange, yellow, greens, aqua, blues, purples, and magentas. And it'll let you change, well, the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. And this is quite useful, especially for quite a colorful edit because it allows you to fine-tune each color to the point where you can really have a color scheme throughout your edit without having to plan it out at the start which is why I love this because I usually don't I try to focus sometimes on color schemes at the start of an edit but you'll tend to notice that towards the end when you can fix up the color scheme it makes it look much nicer so usually I just go down the list I can tell Maybe I want to keep the reds in, so I'm going to drag the reds a bit to the left, keep them more purple. The oranges I'm going to drag pretty far left. The yellows I'm going to turn into oranges. Now we've got a dominantly red to orange feel. Alright, for the greens, I'm thinking... Could I have like an... Mm, turn a bit to a yellow, actually. So we'll make the aquas a bit more green. Ooh. Oh, we could have like an orange yellow teal mood so actually yeah we're gonna do that then the purples we're gonna make it more blue magentas we don't really have any 
and then you can go to the saturation it's essentially the same and really because there's so many sliders and they're all individual you can uh, you can just go back and forth and down the list and figure out what you like fine-tune it to the point where you like the image and so yeah that's pretty much it and then a final thing that I do like so I've saved this I'm gonna duplicate it just in case because I want to keep a, a cleaner layer and I'm gonna go back to filter and camera raw filter and it won't save any of these edits will reset so keep that in mind when you click OK when you're done then we go to effects and then grain and the reason why I use this grain is because you can change the size and the roughness here which you cannot do that through the noise filter which is why I prefer to add my noise through this grain filter right here I usually keep the size to around 15 the roughness I like to keep it pretty high up but I feel it would look nice if I keep it down on this and I just keep it all like that there we go we've got a finished product and so if we compare that to what we had at the start as you can tell it looks much much better so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'll try to upload more tutorials soon um, and we have had a few more subscribers in the past days as well as a video blow up recently so I do appreciate all the views and the subscribers and the kind comments and um, yeah I hope you have a nice day thank you for watching Ooh.